This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're talking about DCC++ EX. We're gonna walk through how to build one of these base stations, and we're gonna talk about why this is a game changer for DCC model railroading. Welcome back everybody. Like I said, we're talking about DCC++ EX. Now there's probably a lot of you that know about DCC++ EX, but I bet there's even more that know about DCC++. So we're going to dive into what makes this different than this right now. DCC++ was a breakthrough when it came out. Originally created by Greg Berman, it's a cheap and easy way to make a layout DCC, which opens a lot of doors and it's open source. This means that someone or a team of people with the know-how could improve on this already awesome setup. And that's exactly what the guys at DCC++ EX did. One thing also about the original DCC++ is it does need a computer connected to it in order to control it. Now, whether that is a laptop or something like a Raspberry Pi right here, it does need something connected to it. And that does add to the cost or the cost of installation, whether you have to make provisions to be able to connect your laptop up. And DCC++ EX addresses that. So what is DCC++ EX? Simply put, it is a massive rewrite of the original DCC++ code to add a lot of features. Here are some of the big ones. The first one you'll notice is that the jumpers for the motors are completely removed. You will not need jumpers for the motors. You will need them for the Wi-Fi setup, which brings me to my next big change. There is a built-in Y-throttle server with no computer required which means you can put this on your layout without a computer and run your DCC locomotives. All you need is a cell phone with one of several Y-Throttle apps like Engine Driver for Android or Y-Throttle for iOS. It has support for Wi-Fi, as stated already, as well as Ethernet. It also has I2C support for hooking up an LCD display. It has better short circuit detection with auto reset and it's also greatly simplified the code. One thing to note, if you do want to hook this up to JMRI, it is still completely compatible with the original DCC++ selection when you're setting up your layout in JMRI. So those are some of the basics of DCC++ EX. Let's look at some of the hardware you use to make the base station. You can build on an Arduino Uno or an Arduino Mega. Now, the code barely fits on a Uno, and it is not the best for it, so I would recommend going with the Mega, and the guys at DCC++ EX recommend this as well, simply because it has more RAM, and you're going to be able to put the Wi-Fi feature onto the Mega, versus you cannot do that with the Uno. Now, like the previous DCC++ setup, you'll need an L298P motor shield, like this one, to help you in looking for this, look for the green terminals on here. I'll link one in the description below. Now, if you do want that Wi-Fi option, which is one of the big draws of DCC++ EX, you have a couple of options. The best and recommended one by the guys at DCC++ EX is a MakerFab Wi-Fi shield. Now, these can be a little bit difficult to get a hold of. I have one linked in the description below of where I have bought multiple shields and you can check that out there. Next is a Wi-Fi shield by Wang Tongsi. And this one is a bit more finicky and takes a bit more work to get working consistently, but it's easier to find. The third one I'm going to show you is using a simple ESB01 Wi-Fi chip. This one is not a shield, so you do have to use jumpers to connect it, but it works pretty well so long as the connections are solid. There are a few more options detailed on the website, but in my research, these three are the most available options in terms of purchasing the hardware. In terms of power supplies, you're going to want a 9 volt 1 amp power supply for the Arduino and a 12 volt 4 to 5 amp power supply for the motor shield. I'll put a link to the website as well as all of these pieces in the description below. Now to get the code you're going to load on your Arduino. Go to the DCC++ EX website and click on the download button. Then click Command Station Downloads. 
scroll down to latest DCC++ EX official release and click official release page. This will take you to a GitHub page where you can download the Arduino sketch and library. Click command station ex.zip. Once downloaded, extract the files from the zip and open the folder that was created. Click through until you get to where the Arduino sketch and all the other necessary files are. Click on Command Station EX and open it up in the Arduino IDE. If you don't have the Arduino IDE, I'll have a link to download it in the description below. Before we begin anything, make sure that you have cut the trace on the bottom of the motor shield between these two solder pads labeled VIN so that you get to keep the more powerful power supply connected to the motor shield from frying your Arduino. For the UNO base station, all you have to do is sit the motor shield on top and you're done. No feeders. You'll connect the track power and main power just like the original DCC++ setup. The power connections are identical for the Arduino Uno and Mega. First, you'll connect the 9 volt power to the Arduino's DC socket, and then connect the 12 volt 4 to 5 amp power supply to the terminal's VIN and ground connections. I have an adapter put on this so that it makes it easier to plug in. I'll link that in the description below. You will need a computer for this setup in order to run trains. Next, we upload the completely unmodified sketch, and boom, you have a DCC++ EX base station on your UNO. The Wi-Fi setup is a bit more complicated. You'll need the Mega for this. First, install the motor shield on top, making sure it's aligned properly. Now for Wi-Fi. The first and most reliable way is to use the MakerFab Wi-Fi shield. These can be a little bit hard to find, like I said, but I have my source linked in the description below. There will be a set of jumpers that come with this that you will need to remove. You align it and sit it on top. Next, we attach two feeders. The first is from pin 18 on the Mega, and you connect it to ESP RX pin number one on the shield. Next, we need to connect pin 19 to ESP TX pin 3 on the shield. And that's it. Now the guys have given you two ways to connect via Wi-Fi. Access point or AP mode or station or STA mode. AP mode sets up its own Wi-Fi. To connect for AP mode, you just need to upload the default program. No changes necessary. If you're like me, you have a lot of Wi-Fi devices. I have over 50 connected to my home Wi-Fi. This cluttered signal made it tough for AP mode to work. So I decided to connect this to my own home Wi-Fi using station mode. To do this, you'll need to set up your Wi-Fi name and password so that the base station can connect to it. Close out of the Arduino IDE, go to the folder that contains the sketch, and find the config.example file. This is a library for doing some of the configuration, including Wi-Fi. Copy and paste this file and rename it config. These files are .h files, and you'll want to make sure that you keep that extension the same. Open the new config file in a text editor like Notepad. Scroll down to this line. Hashtag define Wi-Fi SSID. Replace your network name with your home Wi-Fi network name. Make sure you leave the quotations and have the name inside those quotations. Next, go a few lines down to hashtag define Wi-Fi password and replace the quoted text with your home Wi-Fi password. 
make sure you click save and close the document. Be sure you don't click save as, as this might cause it to save as a text file rather than its .h file. Open up Command Station EX, plug in your Mega, and set all the connections properly in tools, including which board you're using and the port that the Mega is connected to, and upload the sketch. Now to connect using a phone app like Engine Driver, you'll need an IP address and port. For AP mode, this is most likely 192.168.4.1 for the IP address with a port number of 2560. Your network name and password can be found by using the serial monitor. Open the serial monitor in the tools menu and set it to 112,500 baud. You may need to close the serial monitor and reopen it after this. Once it's done its checks, they will be shown here. Now, if you're running the serial monitor check and you get this message with plus plus no AT plus plus, you probably have some wires loose. This is a DIY setup after all, and playing around and finagling my wires fix this every time it happened. For station mode, your port will be 2560 but your Wi-Fi network will assign your base station IP address. Run the serial monitor. Once it's done its checks, you will find it here. Once you have that, you can connect your app of choice with this information and you're off to run your trains. Now this process is the same for all of the Wi-Fi hardware, but their connections and setup are a bit different. Let's start with the ESP01 Wi-Fi module. This is a small chip, not a shield, so you will need jumpers to connect it. You'll need to connect 3-volt power to the ESP01 in two places, the 3V3 pin and the EN pin. You'll connect the ground to ground. Then connect pin 18 to RX and pin 19 to TX. This one is a bit more finicky by nature because it isn't a shield and it's going to be kind of dangling off the side until you secure it, but it does work fairly well. The third hardware setup for Wi-Fi is the Watongzi Wi-Fi shield. Again, I have this part linked in the description below. The first thing you need to do is either bend or cut digital pins 0 and 1. You then need to put the Wi-Fi shield on top of the motor shield and make sure that the pins are aligned. Next, connect pin 19 to the furthest to the edge pin on the digital side of the Wi-Fi chip on the shield. Then connect digital pin 18 to the pin next to the one you connected digital pin 19 to. This setup can be a bit hold your mouth in the correct position to make it work. The pins bend easily and they can be a pain, but when the wires are all hooked up, it does work. Overall, I recommend that if you're going to do the Wi-Fi setup, try to find the Maker Fab Shield. It is by far the most reliable. If you can't, you can get the ESP01 Wi-Fi module chip and it works pretty well so long as you secure the wires properly. And third, the Wing Tong Z shield. It does work, you just may run into a few more issues with disconnections. We've built the base station, we've coded and loaded, it's time to test. I will be using the Train Driver app for iPhone to run this. This is one of several apps I'm reviewing for a future video. I've got my IP address and port, I plug in my DCC address, and I'm able to start my locomotive. And you can see on my tiny test track, the locomotive operates. Now does this work on a larger setup? If you watch my video last week, I was using DCC++ EX to run my brand new layout and it's how I'm going to control that layout going forward. One thing to note is you cannot program locomotives purely with the base station. You will need to connect JMRI and thus a computer. But if you're programming a locomotive, you're going to be using a computer anyways to do that. 
So that is DCC++ EX. I absolutely love it so much that I have installed it on my main model railroad running smoothly. I actually swapped out MRR1. It is running DCC++ EX, no computers attached. So I just want to give a big thank you to Scott over at DCC++ EX. He's part of the team over there and he has been a wealth of information for me, helping me troubleshoot things, um, helping me to figure out any issues that I was having. And um, I wanted to read Read some of the email he sent me to give me some details about DCC++ EX. The big thing that I want to talk about is that he said that what we have done is made DCC possible for those who can't and do not want to purchase hundreds of dollars of commercial products. Yes, it does have its limitations, but it's also fun to figure things out and make newer things available. And some of the things they're considering doing is switching over to an RP240, which is a different than a Arduino. It's a mini computer, and this will give it even more memory and RAM, which will allow for more things. They also want to integrate railroad automation. They want to integrate operations, signals, crossings. Um, things that they are even talking about potentially is Loconet, their own throttles, boosters, etc. So they're looking at a lot of things. This is really just the tip of the iceberg. It's, it's kind of a tipping point. And that's why I really say that this is a game changer. Their mission is to make DCC model railroading more accessible and more affordable to more people. And ultimately that benefits the hobby. And that is one of the big reasons that I love DCC++ and DCC++ EX is it makes the hobby available to more people. So Keep on trucking guys over at DCC++ EX. We will be waiting with bated breath as you guys do your wizardry with code and figure out how to do more things. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I wanna say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They are listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. A lot of cool things. They're getting pictures in advance of my new DCC++ setup and things like that. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and digital, and today we're talking about DCC++. Oh, the wire came out. From here to here. Oh, the wire came out again. This is my demonstration. Mo this is my demonstration model, so I don't have the wires secured. Uh, yep. Yeah.